Today we are going to talk about stories, stories from maintainers of free and open source projects who either by volunteering or by not being paid enough most of the times put out the work to maintain stuff that they give out for free basically for both individual users and companies. And we're going to talk about some stories that I've heard recently that say how this model that we have currently is just not sustainable and it's not working. So the first one, which you probably saw, and if you didn't go read it immediately because it's heartbreaking, it's about CoreJS. So I'm just gonna very quickly do a summary and then give some thoughts about it. CoreJS is a polyfill library of JavaScript and it's used by roughly 75% of the 100 most visited websites, so it's a pretty big library. If I understood this correctly, which I probably didn't, they provide, and by they, I mean this person working on it, provides the ver implementations for the very latest um, ACMA script standards and proposals. I am very much not in the JavaScript world. And yeah, this entire library, which is used again by the most used website, is just maintained by a single person who recently burned out, rightfully so. XKCD picture where the entire internet is, you know, kept alive by a single library developed by a single person who hasn't enough funding. That's exactly the case here. Now, the person working on this library never quite advertised uh, himself or the project. He just published the project on GitHub and that was enough for him. And he never quite uh, searched for big monetary compensation, compensation for what he was doing. In fact, he even moved back to Russia because apparently it's cheaper to live there, so that was easier for him. However, something happened. Do you know about the bus factor? Because this is extremely important here. The bus factor is how many people should be hit by a bus for a project to die. In this case, the bus factor is one for this channel. In fact, the bus factor is one. If I if a bus hit me, th that's it, no more Nicolo. But in theory, the internet and the super important projects the internet relies on should not have a bus factor of one. And what happened here is exactly that. There was a bus factor one and something went wrong. In this particular case, it's not this person getting hit by a bus, but it's this person hitting somebody. <laughs> yeah, l let me read it directly. On April night, he was driving home, two deadly drunk 18 years old girls in dark clothes decided somehow to crawl across a poorly lit highway. One of them lay down in the road, another one sat down and dragged her first directly under my wheels. Sadly, one of them died and the other went to the hospital. And according to him, is innocent. Like, he couldn't have prevented it. According to witnesses, the same. But not according to the jury. So he had to either go to prison or repay a bunch of money to the family. And he didn't have the money. What he tried to do to avoid that is do a fundraising to actually cover the expenses of... Uh, the legal expenses. So what he decided to do is to add every time you installed CoreJS a little console message that says, hello, I'm searching for funds or a job. You can donate to me here and you can contact me. Did that work? Not at all, obviously. His revenue stream, as we'll see later, didn't increase significantly. However, what happened is that people starting started absolutely hating on him absolutely hating. As an example, I quote, get rid of that idiot and this CoreJS library, which is, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> and of course, not only didn't receive much donations, but all the big companies using his project didn't give him a cent, literally. So he went to prison. He stayed there for around a year and then managed to come back and start resume the work on the library again with even less revenue compared to before. So at the very beginning, he was earning around $2,500 a month. This was at the start. Then that decreased to 1,700. And then something happened, which was one of the main platforms to receive donations for him, just stopped giving him money. And you know, 
You can kind of guess the reason. Politics. Russia. I told you he lives in Russia. Something was going to go wrong. So all the donations that he had raised for that month and any following month they didn't arrive to him. Nothing. Which cut his pay from 1,800 to just 800. To be clear, he still receives donations tr through Tidelift, but it's just that Tidelift doesn't give those, that money to him. And by the way, Tidelift does use CoreJS. The irony. <laughs> At this point of the article, he just puts out a big paragraph which starts with a big lettering, no more which is exactly what you would expect. What he says is he either receives mon more money through donations or he's is going to stop making CoreJS publicly available and he's gonna start to charge for it or he's just gonna stop working on the project, which would be extra sad. And he says that especially because now he actually has like a children and he has to, you know, support his family, which is fairly understandable. And something that's also mentioned in the other article I want to talk about, which is called what it feels to be like an open source maintainer, which I've already talked about, but I think it's very important to raise again. And in this case, I think this person is purely talking from a volunteer point of view. He has a job and as a volunteer, he also maintains various of open source projects. And he talks about how it's one of the things that makes like, takes away happiness from him, which is sad. <laughs> and, you know, it feels like, again, you should read the article because I, mean, I wouldn't be able to convey how well written it is. But what it feels like is that it's ex he's extremely overworked and being a developer in open source, and this is completely different from proprietary software. Being a developer in open source means that you have to deal with the people using your software directly. You're doing something that's in direct connection with the community. One very important thing to say about this article is, firstly, there is a constant stream of new issues, new questions and new stuff, and it's very hard to stay on top of all of them. And when you're like looking ahead, he says, I've already told my partner that if and when we decide to start having kids, I will probably quit open source for good. Which is not something you want to hear from somebody who's maintaining open source projects that many people probably rely on. This is not something that's working currently. Another example, which is directly from KDE, is an article from yesterday, actually, and it's called Fast communities, you don't have to yell. So what happened? This is from a KD contributor that recently implemented outlines for Windows, which is something that we KD designers wanted to implement. And those outlines were also implemented to Plasma Dialogues by me, actually. And what happened is that when people tried out these outlines, they asked for there to be an option to be customized, to be removed, which to be clear, fair enough. It is something that we are considering. We're trying to wait whether it makes sense to have that option, which will of course add more code burden and maintenance burden, or if you know it's important enough. So it's something that we are currently thinking of. That is fine. What is not fine is that often enough these comments are toxic. They have a blog and in the comments of the blog there are people going there even though that is not the right place to do this and they start saying oh the outlines are ugly or uh, KDE is becoming like GNOME which is all very toxic behavior and the people even went to the merge request which is not where you should put feedback that is the merge request feedback goes into bugs.kd.org and started complaining about this there. And you might say just a few comments. Yes, but for the maintainer that did this in their free time and now is receiving like dozens of comments about this like every day, it's demotivating to, the, to say the least. And I've already seen in the past where a KD volunteer implemented something. He received some nasty comments about it and said, you know what? Why should I do this? Let's stop working for KDE. Like, why should I put my free time into doing something if what I receive back are insults? So they stop working. And how can you blame them, really? There is 
in fact, an entire research about this, which is called Roads and Bridges, 143 pages long, which talks exactly about this. Open up your phone, your social media, your news, your medical records, your bank, they are all using free and public code. Sometimes this free and public code is made by one single person that maintains third of it. Sometimes they're not paid at all to do that. Sometimes they're not paid enough. And most of the time they're completely overworked. They're doing too much for them. And sometimes it's demotivating and it brings happiness out of them, which is not how it's supposed to work at all. So a couple of things. First of all, people, pr please, please try to be extremely respectful towards those people who are putting out their free time into this. It's horrifying the amount of comments I see around on Reddit and such that are like super annoying. Of course, it has happened to me as well, like receiving some comments uh, nasty about my floating panels and such. I don't care, but you know, don't. I, I would be honestly happier if you didn't. So, but this is not like an actual solution. This is like the minimum. And then we, are, <laughs> we, have, to actual, we have to actually start ha addressing the real issue, which is, making sure that we're able to sustain all the one-person projects for maintainers out there, even from a monetary point of view, somehow. Especially when big companies are using their projects without giving back anything. What, what should we do? I don't know, any ideas?